Hello, calculus kids. Welcome back to another lesson. This is Mr. Bean. And today we're going to cover some things that we have pretty much done already, but we're just going to have one small little twist. So hopefully this won't be too difficult for you. And that is identifying vertical asymptotes and then figuring out what is the limit. So in order to know a vertical asymptote, remember that's when we have a denominator equaling zero and the factors don't cancel. So in other words, we need a first factor, both numerator and denominator. Okay, there are my uh, factor numerator and denominator, if you want to get that written down. And then I just remind myself, if something cancels out, okay, so that represents a whole. So the only time we have a vertical asymptote for this function is if x equals 3. So that's the answer to this first part. x equals 3 is the only vertical asymptote. So that's part of what you're going to be doing in today's packet, is just identifying where the vertical asymptotes are. Now, the thing that will be a little bit of a twist is when you have a vertical asymptote, and you approach the vertical asymptote, let me show you what the graph of this would look like. You have the graph either pushing down or up, down towards negative infinity or up towards positive infinity. And you have to figure out which one it's doing without having the graph or without having a graphing calculator. So could you just do that? Just looking at this, would you know? Well, no, I wouldn't. I mean, it take you have to be pretty good at that stuff to know if it's pushing, pushed up or pushed down for towards infinity or not, negative infinity. So if we look at the graph, this one's pretty simple. We're approaching 3, and right here we have this vertical asymptote at x equals 3. And we're approaching 3 from the left side, so we're coming this direction, and it's pushing down towards negative infinity. So that one's easy by looking at the graph. And then same with this one. If we're on the right side and we push back towards it, it's going up. So that one is a positive infinity. Okay, so boop, boom, boop. So those are the answers to those one-sided limits. Now, if I had, I don't have it on this one. I'm going to do that in an example in just a minute. But if I had the limit as x approaches 3, just of 3 of f of x, maybe you can write that down on the side of your notes if you wanted, then the answer to this would be does not exist. DNE, if you wanted to abbreviate. It does not exist because the left side and the right side are not the same thing, so you couldn't have a specific value for that limit. Okay, so now let's do this without the use of having the graph in front of us. So this first one, we remember what we're doing is trying to figure out if we have a vertical asymptote, and we do. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3, for sure, uh, because there's nothing that cancels here. So what I want is to figure out what is it doing. So is it is the graph at x equals 3, 1, 2, 3, is it pushing down? Is it pushing up? Oh, only from the right side. So as I approach this direction, is it pushing up like that? Or maybe it's pushing down like that. So which one is this? Okay, so let's get rid of that. And the way you do that is we're just going to plug in a number that's really close to it. Kind of like we did earlier this year where we had, let's change the color, when we had uh, values that we would just plug in that were really close. So 1 minus 3.001, and then on bottom we'll put a 3.001, representing a number that's really close to 3 but not yet at 3, just on the right side of it. And so that's what this is. The limit is approximately this. So what do we get on top? We're going to have a negative 2.001. And on bottom, we're going to have a number that's really close to 0, but it is positive, 0, 0, 001. So it's, you can see it's really tiny and small, but it is positive because 3.001 minus 3 is still positive. So then this represents, the limit would represent a negative number on top divided by a positive is a negative and it is then infinity. Two, basically the number two, divided by really, really small, almost zero. That is going to be negative infinity. All right, now next one, five. This is the most complicated as it gets. So uh, let's factor this thing, because it usually makes this easier if you can look at the factors. So we have an x minus three on top, and on bottom, it's x minus 1 times x minus 1. All right, nothing cancels out, so we got to use this whole thing. And the first thing is write small here, because I didn't really give you enough room. Sorry about that. Write kind of small. So we're going to have the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive side. Uh, uh, instead of rewriting this whole thing, let's just call this f of x, so I can be a little bit lazy and not rewrite that. So we're going to approach the number 1 from the right side first. And uh, so we know 1 is a vertical asymptote because they don't cancel. And if we do that, then let's go ahead and say that this is going to be approximately uh, 1.001 minus 3 all over. So I'm using the, this expression here, this little factor. 
so this is going to be 1.001 minus 1, and then it's squared since there's two of them. If it wasn't, if it wasn't the same thing, I would just have to write that next factor out. All right, so now what? This is going to be approximately, this is negative, what is that? 1.999, yeah, all over. And then on bottom here, I'm going to have uh, 0 0.001 squared. So what I have now is a negative almost two divided by a really small number that's squared, which makes it even smaller. So this is definitely negative number divided by super small positive number. This is approaching negative infinity. Okay, now that was just the right side. So I also have to check the left side. So as x approaches one of the left side of one of this expression, we'll call it again f of x, then that's approximately, now I just do the same thing, but I'm going to start on the left side of one. So that would be 0 0.999 minus three all over, well, that was sloppy. All over uh, 0 0.999 minus 1 quantity squared. That's going to be approximately negative 2.001 on top. And on bottom, I now have a negative number that's really close to 0. So it's really small. Squared. Now, some of the stuff you could do in your head. So you're going to be pretty good at it. And you can just do things in your head and write down a few things. But the idea is to, I'm showing you the work so you know, uh, you, you know a little bit of an idea of what you would be doing in your head. Okay, so then what is this equal? This is a negative number divided by a really small positive number. Why is it positive? Because you're squaring it. So a negative number divided by a really small positive number is a negative infinity. Therefore, since they approach the same value of negative infinity, the answer is negative infinity for both four and five. Okay, so again, if these left and right sided limits had been different, you would say does not exist, just like we did back here with this part right here. I said that the limit from both sides would not exist, but for this example, it does because they're approaching the same thing. Okay, so again, just to reiterate, you are now approaching a specific number from both the left and sometimes also the right, and is it, a approaching infinity or is it going down to negative infinity for your limit okay that's the end of this one rock that mastery check and i'll see you back in the next lesson where we will do some horizontal asymptotes